Hi, my name is Nick Dixon. I'm a breast imaging radiologist with VRAD. And today I'm going to be giving a brief overview of breast calcifications. We're going to split this talk into two quick parts. And we're going to focus on breast calcifications through the lens of the updated fifth edition or 2013 edition of the BIRADS manual. There were quite a few changes to nomenclature and even some management changes between the fourth and fifth edition of BIRADS, but we're not going to spend too much time discussing changes specifically since that was nine years ago that those changes came out. We're just going to be discussing things through the lens of the updated BIRADS manual with the current nomenclature. I have no disclosures. The first thing we're going to discuss is the approach to evaluating calcifications in the breast. When you're evaluating calcifications, you're really looking at two main criteria. The first being the morphology or the shape of the individual calcifications that you see. And the second being the distribution throughout the breast or both breasts including determining if something is multifocal or bilateral. Of course, with most findings in radiology, multiplicity and bilaterality is reassuring of benignity. But taking these two criteria, the morphology and the distribution together, can help us characterize things as typically benign or more suspicious. And we'll see as we go through this talk that both the morphology and the distribution are at least equally important in determining whether something is more typically benign or more suspicious. The first thing we'll discuss are the typically benign morphology for calcifications. We'll go through this list here. And to start, typically benign calcifications, they tend to be larger, they tend to be coarser, they tend to be round with smooth margins, and they're also more frequently easy to see than their malignant counterparts point calcifications, which tend to be finer, more pleomorphic, and a little bit more faint in the breast. When a specific, typically benign etiology cannot be assigned, you should describe the calcifications in the report that includes the morphology and the distribution of the calcifications, and this can help you determine a management decision. Obviously, benign calcifications don't need to be commented on. If they are elected to be commented on, then you should utilize a BIREDS 2 benign assessment code rather than a BIREDS 1 negative assessment code in your report. We're gonna start with round calcifications. So round calcifications can be split between round and punctate. Punctate is technically a subset of round calcifications when the individual calcifications are less than half a millimeter in diameter. But round calcifications can vary in size and opacity. And this is, kind of a unique entity in the world of calcifications because an isolated group of round or punctate calcifications can occasionally warrant a BIREDS-3 probably benign descriptor. That's the only um, example of calcifications meeting a BIREDS-3 descriptor given in the BIREDS manual. However, round and punctate calcifications can also be suspicious if they're in a linear or segmental distribution if they're new or increasing, or if they're adjacent to a known cancer, these should be considered suspicious and biopsied. Here we have an example of grouped round and punctate calcification. You can see these be called round centrally, and these smaller, more faint calcifications are on the periphery of the larger calcifications would be called punctate. This is an example of diffuse punctate calcifications. You can see this is a left CC view. You can see very faint punctate calcifications scattered throughout the breast parenchyma all the way to the lateral margin of the breast and some along the medial margin of this partially included view. Juxtaposed to this slide of segmental punctate calcification, so as we discussed previously, this should be given a BIREDS-4 suspicious assessment. This was and was biopsied, and biopsy yielded DCIS. So despite the typically benign morphology, in this instance, the suspicious distribution trumped that and got us to the correct answer. We're going to move on to another typically benign type of calcification known as RIM calcifications. Historically, these were known as eggshell or lucent-centered calcifications. And these are thin, benign calcifications that are typically deposited on the surface of a sphere. So these non-group calcifications range in size from less than a millimeter to greater than one centimeter, 
and they're most commonly related to fat necrosis or calcifications in a cyst wall. Here we have some typically benign rim calcifications. Next, we're going to move on to dystrophic calcifications. Dystrophic calcifications are commonly seen in the breast following trauma or surgery. They are irregular in shape, typically greater than one millimeter in size, and they, again, frequently have loosened centers. Here are two examples of typically benign dystrophic calcifications. You can see here, these are almost certainly related to the trauma of surgery, given that there are surgical clips present. And here, again, you can see thin, benign calcium deposited in the wall, probably of an oil cyst, again, likely post-traumatic on the right example. Next, we'll move on and begin discussing another typically benign type of calcifications known as milk of calcium. Milk of calcium is a manifestation of sedimented calcifications in either macro or micro cysts. They are usually grouped, and they're kind of unique because they change morphology between the CC and 90-degree lateral or MLO imaging. So they typically appear smudgy or round on the CC view and are a little less well-defined. And they're more clearly defined and often curvilinear or concave up, giving that teacup appearance on lateral imaging. This is a nice example of both of those findings of typically benign milk of calcium. You can see on the right image, which is a CC view, how smudgy and poorly defined those calcifications are. Whereas on the left image, the ML view, you get that nice T-cupping, the curvilinear concave up view, which is pathognomonic for benign milk of calcium. These can be safely assessed BR2. This is another example of calcium sedimenting within a cyst. Here we have intermixed grouped amorphous calcifications mixed with benign milk of calcium. So when you look at this CC view and this ML view, you'll notice the vast majority of the calcifications on the ML view and on the CC view change shape. On the CC view, they appear smudgy. On the ML view, you get that characteristic teacup appearance. However, the single group of calcifications that we've marked with the arrow here doesn't change shape between the same views. They stay the same. So this was correctly assessed as a BR4 suspicious assessment because this group was not following the rules, you can have suspicious calcifications intermixed within a background of typically benign milk of calcium. And you can see that this biopsy yielded DCIS. This was a great call by the radiologist. This is a close-up view of that slide, so you can see those calcifications a little bit better. Okay, we're going to talk now about suture or sutural calcifications, another typically benign and rather self-explanatory subgroup of calcifications. This is just calcium deposition within suture material. You'll see this frequently post-surgical patients. It's typically linear or tubular. And a lot of times the entire area of suture is calcified and you can see the entire knot making this relatively easy to assess and diagnose. I'm going to talk about another typically benign type of calcifications, coarse or popcorn-like. These large calcifications that are two to three millimeters in size or larger are produced by involuting or degenerating fibroadenomas. Here is a, another group of these typically benign coarse or popcorn-like calcifications. You can see these are multifocal. Okay, and again, multiplicity is reassuring of benignity, especially if bilateral. However, when calcifications are this coarse, these are considered benign by default, given their popcorn-like appearance. 
So even a single group of these calcifications should be given a BIRADS 2 assessment. We're going to talk about typically benign calcifications related to skin calcifications. These are lucent-centered and pathognomonic in their appearance. They're most commonly seen along the inframammary fold adjacent to the sternum or overlying the axilla and around the areola. Atypical forms of skin calcification, i.e. maybe in an area that you weren't expecting or that doesn't have a pathognomonic lucent-centered appearance, can be confirmed to be present within the skin by performing tangential views or with modern tomosynthesis views, if calcification is present within the first three slices, it can be considered to be in the skin. This is an example of classic lucent center calcifications in a parasternal location on both sides. Again, multiplicity, bilaterality, and a pathognomonic benign appearance are all reassuring of a benign diagnosis and a BR2 code can safely be assessed for this patient with no further follow-up required. Vascular calcifications are another typically benign appearance. These parallel tracts or linear tubular calcifications are clearly associated with blood vessels when they are evolved to the point that they are in this example. This is not a diagnostic dilemma. However, sometimes in an early vascular deposition, it can be a little tricky. You can feel like it's probably a vascular calcification but you're not quite certain yet. And although that's not a BIRADS manual sanctioned use of BR3, that is a relatively common use of BR3, is presumed evolving vascular calcifications. A lot of times, six or 12 months later, you can confirm that these are indeed vascular calcifications and end the patient's follow-up protocol. Another typically benign type of calcifications are large rod-like calcifications. These are associated with ductal ectasia, forming solid or discontinuous smooth linear rods. They're typically rather large, greater than a half millimeter in diameter, and follow a ductal distribution radiating toward the nipple. These are typically bilateral, typically in patients older than 60. Okay? This is an example of those extensive large rod-like calcifications in a ductal distribution. You can see diffuse distribution throughout the breast, these large calcifications oriented towards the nipple. This is classic for what we call secretory calcifications, or alternatively, another pathology term for that is plasma cell mastitis. Okay, this concludes the discussion of the typically benign morphology. We're going to end the first part of this talk here, and when we resume for part two, we are going to discuss the typically more suspicious morphology of calcifications, and we will also discuss the distribution of calcifications, both typically benign and more suspicious distribution of calcifications.